Hey everyone, my name is Vanessa Huerta and I would like to thank you all for attending my virtual senior capstone. Also, thank you Dr. Wilkins, my family and friends for the support and encouragement throughout the semester. My senior presentation or senior capstone presentation is on um, educational challenges faced by Hispanic students and social uh, solutions for schools. Content of the presentation is introduction, purpose, literature review, findings, conclusions, references, and questions. For the introduction, I started off with some statistics. The U.S. Hispanic population was 60.6 .6 million in 2019, an increase of approximately 10 million since 2010, and it is the largest ethnic racial minority group in the nation. Also, Hispanic students make up 23% of all students in schools, colleges, and universities. Educational performance, academic performance on national assessment of education progress, also known as NAEP. English language learners average reading and math scores were below basic level. For the English language learners, um, the reading math scores were 31%, the math scores were 24%, and for white, um, students were, the reading were, scores were 54%, math scores were 46%. College entrance exams, only 26% of Hispanic Hispanics met all four benchmarks um, on the ACT. Dropout rates, Hispanic students have one of the largest or one of the highest dropout rates of all racial and ethnic groups. Hispanics have 8% dropout rates followed by Pacific Islanders, Islanders with 8.1%. College and college degree, only 22% of Hispanic individuals over the age of 25 have an associate's degree or higher compare, compared to 40% of the general population. So as we see, the problem is that Hispanic students have lower academic performance in high school, perform lower in academic, uh, perform lower in college entrance exam, exams and are more likely to drop out of school. Educational career, uh, educational challenges, language barrier, culture barriers, adjusting to the U.S. education system, low teacher expectations, lack of parental involvement in schools. And before we go further into this presentation, I'd like to share my personal experience as an English language learner. Um, I faced these, or I continue to do so, language barrier, culture barriers, adjusting to the U.S. education system, and lack of parental involvement. I've never experienced the low teacher expectations, but um, the language barrier switching from English to Spanish um, and learning the new language, just coming into a setting where I was completely lost, did not understand a bit of what they were saying to me. Um, I had no way of communicating with my teachers to reach out for help or to communicate with my peers. And um, adjusting to the U.S. education system, it was more of my parents' challenge just because I was I came here to the U.S. when I was four, so I started 4K, 5K, and I adapted to their education system. However, my parents' education experience back home was different for, from the education that I am receiving here in the U.S. Um, culture barriers, um, my culture that I brought over, it's completely different from the culture offered here. And also lack of parental involvement in schools. Um, my parents never seem to be very involved in school, in my school, uh, because of language barrier, culture barriers. They were never really, um, they would never understand what really was going on. I really never had the um, intention to even go because they wouldn't understand. Um, they didn't know what was the purpose behind the action or the event. But even even though my parents really weren't involved like physically in school setting, um, they have always motivated me, encouraged, supported me throughout my education careers. Um, they valued my education. They have always told me to pursue my dreams and never let these challenges limit me because I I can overcome all of these challenges as I have today. And um, I know that a lot of um, students or English language learners 
relate to me. This is why I chose this um, to research this into further detail, just to see um, what recommendations and what educators can do to prevent or to close these gaps. The purpose of this presentation is to bring awareness of the challenges that Hispanic students face in schools and to share recommendations for schools to increase the positive outcomes of Hispanic students. For the literature review, um, I reviewed about 10 empirical studies published in peer-reviewed journals to complete my research. So for culture barriers for students and families, uh, Zilk found that new Hispanic immigrant students did not speak English and had difficulty bonding with Hispanic students that did speak English because of the different cultures. So even though they spoke Spanish, they had different ways of doing things, uh, saying different wording, different phrases. They didn't bond, they didn't build a relationship just because it came from different regions of the um, same country maybe, or just same from Central America, from Latin America. Even though the language is the same, the customs are different. And Zari found that the lack of communication and culture understanding um, among school personnel inhibited parents' involvement in school and negatively impacted students' learning. So parents were not really involved in a school setting just because, once again, they didn't understand what really was going on to the reasoning behind the event or to the purpose of being involved, they weren't able to understand. So why even bother to attend? It was that was basically their mindset of their of the Hispanic parents. And for uh, also discrimination in schools, um, Adiyanis found that schools were segregating all Latino students by putting them in a school uh, in a class for English language learners. So instead of like bringing them over to like different um different classrooms making them feel part of the school they would just segregate them and isolate them all together which that just created hostility between them because some newcomers that or hispanic newcomer immigrant students were previously involved in um, gangs or were violent and those who were involved in gang gang or violence violence activities would influence those students who were not and that made parents concern and teachers as well but you know once again they can teachers contributed to that hostility another researcher good found that teachers did not value students input and disrespected and discriminated against them based on stereotypes so their stereotypes were just latino students were being lazy and not wanting to work and failed to actually recognize why the students didn't complete the work or acted the way they did. And lastly, Ansari um, found that Hispanic parents felt that teachers and staff were disrespectful to them and did not feel welcome in school just because um, some in articles, and I'm sorry, his articles um, stated that teachers were not very like friendly, um, just really didn't really um, direct their conversation to them because they felt like they weren't able to understand so why I even bother talking to the Hispanic parents. Uh, school barriers, um, Cavasso and Cavasso Jr. found that teachers had low expect, lower expectations for Hispanic students. So they would um, prohibit students from like really receiving, min well, student, Hispanic students receive minimal information about higher education. Um, they didn't really um, form part of higher content academics. And Hispanic students felt that they were pushed away from education. So once again, like Hispanic students were not enrolled in um, high academic perform or high academic con classrooms. I can't write it. Uh, family support. Um, Goldsmith uh, found that parents were motivated to contribute their children's academic success through home-based strategies rather than high levels of education or income. Um, parents motivated um, their student or their child based on their um, adversities in their childhood. So what they went through, what they didn't have, they wanted their children to encounter or they to acquire. 
their beliefs um, were to have more opportunities to be successful academically in the U.S. than their native country. A May and Weatherspoon found that parents' expectations influenced positive student be behaviors, in including educational persistence and performance. Duran found that mothers expected their children to do household chores after completing their homework. So they valued their education. They knew their importance of completing their homework, studying, and then doing their home, their household chores. So teaching them both responsibilities, but choosing education over home chores was just a point where uh, parents really understood the need to acquire a higher education or a good education for their children. And lastly, Jimenez found that the aspiration within Hispanic families, um, families really had high expectations for their children. So in this research, he stood out that parents really motivated and really expected a lot from their children because they taught them never give up and pursue for your dreams, even though we have all these obstacles in front of, in front of us. And the findings and recommendations um, provide support for students, incorporate students' cultures and schools, provide academic values and preparation, welcome and involve families, communicate with families, and learn about students' cultures. So for the first one, uh, provide support for students. Sanchez Esparza in Colón found that having a mentor as a supportive student, a supportive adult associated with, associated, um, with having fewer absences and student sense of belonging in school. So when an English language learner has a mentor or a supportive mentor, they have a, someone to rely on. They have someone to look up to in a school setting and not feel as lost. They have the confidence and the trust in someone. Um, having high expectations for the students also provides them like more opportunities to see their strengths and help them develop a growth mindset. Provide practical support with uh, college applications um, and financial aid scholarship paperwork and all that process to acquiring a higher education and lastly mcgovern um, found that students tried harder when they had immigrant parents who struggled to provide opportunities for them so as when the students would recognize or would see that their parents went through so much to provide or give them all of these opportunities all of these essentials so they can acquire an education to perform well in, um, in school really motivated the students to have a little sense of um, consciousness to think my parents are doing all of this for me. I need to like do my best, try my best and make them proud. Incorporate, student, incorporate students' cultures in schools. Um, Louis and newcomers are two researchers that found that decorating classrooms with flags and artificials that reflected the students' cultures, made students feel proud and valued just because they would feel at home, like they would, um, they were accepted, their cultures were brought into and shared with everyone or displayed for everyone to see. Jimenez um, also said that teachers should see the students' cultures as a strength. Uh, for another researcher also similar similar to uh, Jimenez also said that students were bilingual and heard positive comments about their culture also made students um, proud and recognized that their culture has strengths and not just negativity um, towards or said negative stuff about their culture. McGovern found that um, found that um, benefits of giving students opportunity to teach the community about their different cultures and different regions of different regions really gives the, the community of an understanding of why different students, even though they speak Spanish, have different ways of doing things. Provide academic values and uh, preparation. Terebino studied high school student Latino 
or Latino students who were um, recruited to a college education career, uh, program. So this program was really to um, prepare to encourage students to acquire higher education to become a professional educator in the United States. Uh, mentors provided academic tutoring, motivation, and feedback on uh, classroom or class assessments. So providing tutoring on or in a content area where they struggled um, really to push or to close the gaps. Um, Cooper also uh, st um, established that growth mindset leads to people leads people to view effort as a sign of perseverance. So people are trying um, their best, um, giving feedback as useful information, setting goals as a tool to push oneself beyond current uh, capabilities and challenges as opportunities to grow. Welcome and involved families. Um, Hispanic parents are more likely to contribute to the student success, success when they are academically involved. Uh, Walker found that parents are more involved when they received an invite to participate in school. So whether it's to form part of um, an event or to attend an, um, a meeting or just to come and give their input, uh, parents seem to be or have the confidence and the trust that the feeling that they are wanted in a school and to voice their opinion in this, their child's school. Also, McGovern found that schools can help to make parents feel valued in, by inviting them to plan events at which they can share information about their cultures. So by educating, educating, educating others on um, their different cultures and to why they do different things or how they do different things also makes the students or the te uh, families, I'm sorry, feel really appreciated, valued, and welcome. And one important, also another important thing is, um, and sorry, in Ansari's uh, study, um, the schools to provide workshops for parents. So like providing materials that the parents might need or be helpful for um, parents to help them on their child's homework in both English, uh, Spanish and English, um, tutorials on how to do stuff, videos, um, guidance to how to work out their um, classroom, class work. And communicate with families. Um, Ariana's study, in Ariana's study, um, established that teachers should understand that Hispanic families are not just the parents, but also like the grandparents, the uncles, the aunts, and just expanding and building also relationship with other family members and not just the parents. It's also um, a way to communicate with others just because maybe the uncle or the aunt might have a little more understanding of like the English language or be easier to reach the family through a different um, or another family member than just the parents. Um, also, um, the schools had parent conferences in a group of family members. So instead of having individual parent uh, conferences, the school or the uh, teachers in the school would gather a group of Hispanic parents to have a conference with. That made the parents more feel more confident and rely on each other to speak up or to listen to their um, conferences. And sorry, also found that Hispanic parents obtain most of their information from social network, networks, families and friends and other organizations. Um, also an important thing to know is that churches form part or play a, a, an important role in a Hispanic family. So that's also a way to communicate with families is through a church or organizations that their child might be part of or such as like the YMCA or organizations like that. Um, hiring a bilingual aid to translate for parents just on like news or events, just something that, that uh, the parents need to know. Also, Spanish language gathering is just like an organization of Hispanic parents gathering 
to um, voice their concerns or opinions, and it's just Hispanics uh, his, or Spanish speakers. Learn about the students' cultures. Um, be educated in the diversity among Hispanic cultures. So understand like the beliefs of the students and the families, and that will be like it will help educators understand once again the reasoning behind why they seem to be a little um, unknown or unaware of the things. And different regions of the same country are also, um, they, have all, they also have different cultures, as mentioned previously. And conclusions, um, it is important to acknowledge the educational challenges faced by Hispanic students, but it's a lot more than that. It's just to acknowledge students' culture, um, building on their strengths, providing them with mentoring, uh, giving them practical support, inviting parents to uh, participate in school, having cultural events, building relationships with uh, families, and having good communication with families. Uh, teachers need more professional preparation to understand that there is cultural diversity within Hispanic and Latino populations. And lastly, uh, support with schools and teachers. Hispanic students can thrive and accomplish their goals and fulfill their parents' expectations of having a successful life in the U.S. And here are my references. And now if anyone have has a question, feel free to ask through the um, chat or just speak up.